وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا This fiqh is essential for the understanding and for the correct application of religion. We cannot dispense with fiqh. And I was saying the book of zakah, zakah in general is very complex. See, religion isn't just about salah. Religion isn't just about one or two masail. Religion and the fiqh that the ulama have left us, may Allah have mercy on them, contains hundreds of thousands, if not over a million masail. Relating to every aspect of religion. Every aspect. And it's an amazingly complex topic. It's a labyrinth of information. And it's difficult for scholars to handle. I've, I've spoken to you about Imam Anwar Shah of Kashmiri, rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam Anwar Shah of Kashmiri was amazing. And I, I mean amazing. In fact, one of the phrases that some of the ulama used to use about him was Arab ulama. Law his zaman min al a'yan. That one of the sad things, well, it wasn't sad, but one of the things that didn't work in his favor, Allah ma'an warsha al Kashmiri rahmatullahi alayhi, is that. He, he came in the last century, and therefore people weren't able to appreciate him. Had he been one of the earliest scholars, he would have been regarded as one of the greatest classical scholars of Islam, without doubt. One, he had, a, he had an amazing memory, photographic memory. He wouldn't forget. I spoke to his son, and Imam Nusha al-Kashmir passed away. But I spoke to his son, and we, there was a group of scholars, and we, we asked him a few questions regarding his father. And one of them was this famous question, that, is it true that your father had a photographic memory? And he said, yeah, many ulama, many of the greatest ulama would ask Allama al Shah al-Kashmiri about his memory. And this was his reply, consistent reply. He said, if I read a book by skimming through it, I probably won't forget that book or what I've read for, for a good 30 years. But if I ever read a book properly, not skimming through it, but actually reading it, inshallah, I will never forget it for the rest of my life. It's true. Once he, whilst teaching Bukhari, he mentioned something from Fathul Qadir, which is a commentary of a Hanafi book of fiqh, Al-Hidayah. Fatih al-Qadir is written by Kamal al-Din ibn al-Humam, rahmatullahi alayhi, famous faqih and muhaddith. So after quoting and citing a paragraph, Allama wa Shah Kashmiri, rahmatullahi said, I read that book 36 years ago. And if you were to, and I have never read it since. I read it once and I haven't read it since. If you were to go back, and you know how I many, depending on the publication, Fatul Qadir can be available in 20, 25 volumes. It's a huge book. So he said, I read it 36 years ago. And I say as a gift of Allah to me that Allah has blessed me with this gift. Tahdithan bin ni'mah. I announce Allah's favor to you, upon me. That if you were to go back and refer to this paragraph from Fatul Qadir, which I quote to you now, verbatim from memory, having read that book over 36 years ago, you will not find one letter or even one wow here or there. And that was true. He had a photographic memory. So not only did he have a brilliant photographic memory, see some people have good memories, but they, don't, they lack the analytical skills. He also had a piercing insight and a brilliant scientific and analytical mind. And a lot of people have good minds, good analytical scientific minds, but they don't have good memories. Those who possess both a good memory as well as piercing insight and brilliant analytical skills, that's a lethal combination. Very few people have that. Imam al Rashad Kashmiri rahmatullahi possessed both. And he was amazing. 
he would comment on issues of philosophy, dialectics, all manner of things, so much so that Imam Nusha, I, I, I've got a reason for mentioning this. Imam Nusha Kashmir, rahmatullahi alayhi, even claimed to have written about and understood the theory of relativity before Einstein. And he claims, Imam Musha Kashmiri rahmatullahi, that this theory of relativity was actually originally discovered by Arab Muslim scientists. And Imam Musha Kashmiri rahmatullahi alayhi, has a whole treatise on it. So he could talk about theory of relativity, about philosophy, ancient Greek philosophy, history. He was amazing. I mean, when he's talking about Bukhari, just by passing, he would say things like, this narrator in this chain, amongst thousands of narrators, just say as a comment, he said, this narrator is one of the students of Imam Zufar, but his position is this, his position is that. He is the same narrator who has been declared weak by this Imam on this occasion, but declared authentic by the same Imam on another occasion. Purely out of memory, he could, he could quote absolutely anything. But the same Anwar Shah Kashmiri Rahmatullahi says, and this is the point I'm trying to get at, he said, and he said himself of himself, he said, there is no science or there is no discipline of learning in which I do not have an opinion. I have an opinion in virtually everything. But, he said, except in fiqh, I am in fiqh, ana muqallidun sirf. I am a pure muqallid. I follow the fiqh, letter to letter. I have an opinion in every science, in every discipline, except fiqh, except jurisprudence and Islamic law. In fiqh, I do not entertain my own individual opinions. I am a follower of the Hanafi fiqh. And that's Kashmiri. Of course, roles are reversed now. Those were the old days. Now, we don't have an opinion, we probably don't have the ability to formulate and entertain an opinion in any topic. Our minds are completely blank. What did you have for breakfast yesterday? <laughs> but our minds are blank even about our own lives. But when it comes to the Qur'an and hadith, mashallah, we have an opinion on every verse of the Qur'an and every hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and every law of fiqh. 